in uh, event taking place <laughs> at uh, Kirchensarten in the Black Forest. Beautiful rolling countryside, as you can see. A little bit uh, damp out there today, and uh, massive number of spectators. Uh, several thousand of them have been around the whole track, keeping an eye, and you can see them there massed behind the start-finish line. And uh, we had 315 competitors in the men's race, whittled down to 130 starters. And we're having a quick look there at uh, some of the riders. Uh, Jan Wajak of the USA has come all the way here. Gerhard uh, Zadribelek, well, there's a name to be conjured with. And uh, Tim Davis and Tim Gould have come across here. That's uh, Tim Gould now for Great Britain. And a busy time signing autographs for these riders. And of course, it's Mike Klug himself. What else would you expect, well known in this neck of the woods then? Uh, Mike Klug, as he comes from Berlin. See how the bikes lined up there? Quite a job, and a very good chance to look at the suspension system on some the bar ends there, neatly laid down uh, for this Le Mans start. Here we go. And Thomas Frischneck there in the blue jersey, first to get his bike because he is the number one, and Tim Gould not far behind him at the moment, Mike Klug, uh, rapidly trying to make a getaway there. See, he's a fellow with the chopped off sleeves on his shirt. And all the massive field behind here. If you're at the back of this pack, boy, you've got a job to come through. But the, the top men, the top 50, have been seeded. That's why we saw t uh, Tim Gould and uh, Thomas Frischneff right at the start, right at the front of this, uh, this field, because that's the way they set them off. It's unfair to put them at the back of this group, though I'm sure, knowing how good they are, they work their way through pretty sharply. And already at the front then, uh, Jan Wajdek of the USA, alongside him, uh, Gerhard uh, Zadriblek from Austria in the GT colours. Tim Gould in there in the grey colours. And look, Peugeot. And uh, yes, look, I tell you, right down the back, there's a long, long way. It's probably something around about a minute now from start to back of this, of this field. And still putting on the pressure at the front, uh, Jan Wajak from the USA. Thomas Frischnet sitting on the wheels. Tim Gould with him, very closely packed at the moment, aren't they? There's no doubt about it. There's Klug sitting in, watching them go through. And not much opportunity for overtaking at this particular neck of the woods. Well, some of the riders we've not been seeing before, because Jan Vajak, the uh, USA Scott International rider, has uh, suddenly come up bursting on the scene here, and he's managed to open a bit of a gap, and here, Krishnet, though, quite happy, I think, to just stay out of trouble mm -hmm. because going into this uh, round today, he was in the lead uh, on the point score ahead of John Tomac. But Zadriblak has certainly been closing the gap on them uh, all the way through because he's been riding extremely well so far without success. He hasn't actually got a first place yet a while. And so perhaps uh, the rest of the riders uh, will have to watch him today because he's getting stronger all the time. In fact, looking down, Zadriblak, he's had uh, two... Uh, uh, two thirds uh, so far, fourth in Holland, fifth in Switzerland, the third was at uh, Canada, and already Jan Wajak out the front at the moment. Again, not featuring high up in the overall classification. In fact, he's coming into this race, he was lying eighth overall, and uh, not either managing to get much better in, in the top ten. So, positions begin to change a little bit right now. Tim Gould there, working his way up. And number 12 dropping through. Peter Herrick, the Czechoslovakian rider, a first-class cyclo-cross rider. And number 69, Mike Klug of Germany. At the moment, uh, not really up with the pace. And here on the second lap, zadriblet has gone away and has been disaster for um, Fishnet. He's not really on the pace at the moment. The gap has opened up and he's dropping off. He's still way back here and for some reason or other, He's not holding the pace. That yeah, like is going away from him then. So that is something to watch out for. These one, two riders here. Gould is there. Prishnet not with them at the moment. He certainly was off the pace. And so. Zadriblak really powering away from this field. Tim Gould closing up on him into second place at the moment. Looking back there for Frischnet and he's not with them. Well, he'll have to do something about that. There's a whole string of riders rocketing through now. 
and Gerhard Zabrak is away in the front. Well, as the cowbells ring out in the background, I can tell you that, in fact, uh, Thomas Frischnett had a second lap crash there, and uh, he's had to abandon this, the ninth race, and he's badly hurt his, his ribs, and somehow and his tyre had gone flat, and he didn't inflate it properly, and he crashed out of... Uh, so now, Zadriblek is really going away and finding superb form. Tim Gould trying to chase him down at the moment. And he seems to be the only person capable of staying with them. Henk Dönis beginning to close up on him as well, though. And Ludovic Zabalo is likely with him. And so there's quite a lot of riders here that are, are new to this level of competition. At this sort of level, because they've been racing in European series. And now they've got people like Frischnett, who's out of it. Zadriblek, who's been riding over in the States, coming back into the action. That's Bait Vebel, the Swiss rider from GT, uh, GS Titan Alpine Stars. And it's a nice little group of riders here working their way through. And you can see there the back rider's got one of those what they call camel bags on the back for uh, liquid, just to make sure that um, they get plenty of liquid. And this is a difficult part. Oh my goodness, like a pack of cards, and down they go. Well, that's one of the problems, isn't it, of uh, close riding like that. So, bait to uh, Reckenbull of uh, Switzerland in all sorts of trouble. But. Uh, now, still leading him through, Gerhard Zadribliak. <laughs> Whistles blowing uh, to clear the way as Dubois of France comes through. Tim Gould is right on his wheel. Come on, Tim. And still out there at the moment, disappearing into distance, uh, uh, Zadribliak. But Jan Vico chasing hard with Peter Herrick, puts his foot down. Herrick was going extremely quickly then. Hank Denise following through with Blake Fable. Bernd Lehmann from Germany coming through. Well, this is quite a close race at the moment. The ladies with a bit of a procession, and uh, Eric Ubelhardt trying to stay on the pace. But up here on the fourth lap, there's no doubt about it, this is Aust Austrian rider, winner of the San Sebastian Grand Prix when he was riding for 7-11 about three years ago, has opened up a considerable gap on Tim Davis. Tim then still looking to improve on his overall positions in the World Cup at the moment. He came into this race uh, lying in fourth place. Tim behind Ned Overin, John Tomek and Thomas Frischnett. None of them now riding this one because Frischnett has crashed out of it. So Tim could improve his overall positions in the Grundig UCI uh, World uh, Cup. Denise, well, he's been, uh, Johnny's been out of action for some time now, but he's looking good at the moment. And an enthusiastic crowd all around the course, uh, recognising that Gerhard Zadriblek is showing all his skills and strength on his GT bike there. The lightweight aluminium one, just with the front suspension. And not holding the pace at all is uh, the world champion cyclocross rider. He's not been on our screen now for some time. He's dropping out of it to Mike Kluge. In fact, he's having difficulty staying in the top 20. Uh, number 12 going through there is Peter Herrick, Mike Klug having had a bit of a bad crash. In fact, it's only his, his real second hard Grundig mountain bike series that he's ridden in. Uh, he did do the downhill, which we covered on Eurosport the other week, did bike. That was a strange thing to do, having crashed out recently, but still he was looking for the competition. And there, number 55, Hank Jenny, still going through. Chased down by Marcel Arns from Holland, another road rider who's taken to the muddy tracks and the thick uh, tyres. Bruno Hillerman going through with Switzerland. Then Eric Uberhardt. Then Tim Davis of Great Britain beat uh, Brackpool, Bait Fable and Lutz Schaefer. So as a pack of trying to chase down our leader, we're going to take a short break. Come back after some more action. Welcome back to our star performer on this, the final lap of the race. Gerhardt... Uh, Zadobliak of uh, the GT team, riding virtually on home ground now, has gone so far away, he's well out of sight, he's got uh, something like nearly two minutes on Tim Gould, who's really punching the pedals and trying to stay on the pace now. Denise, now back in action, he's been able to train for ten weeks in the spring following a hernia operation, but he's got his old form back now. Jan Wykak on his way through. Yeah. 
Peter Rick close behind him too. Henk uh, Janis had been in there a bit further up the charts than this one, but he's just dropped a little bit back now. Coming in on this final lap of this course. Listening to what's happening out on the course. And you can see looking back down the slope what a, what a long, hard climb he's had up here. Looking remarkably fit and fresh despite the fact he's been in the saddle now for nearly two hours on a very, very tough course indeed. Sitting well back on that back wheel. Look how far down the slope it is. He's come all the way up there and he's just sitting back on that back wheel to get maximum grip. Says no to a drink. And then down the other side, watching for the ruts because at this point, when you're a bit tired, and look at the crosswind blowing. Tim, do it, do it, ab uh, Tim Gould absolutely hammering after him now, closing the gap down all the way. Well, Gould looks good for a second place. Whilst behind him here, Hank Dennis has moved through. He's caught up with some riders in front of him. In fact, he's just gone past uh, Ludovic uh, Dubo of France, the French rider, just being overtaken. And closing up very quickly indeed, Jan Weigak is coming on towards the back end. Peter Herrick, this is a close battle. Gould now looking confident for a second place, but the battle is on for third place from these riders who are very, very closely packed together indeed. Swiss rider Ehrlich uh, Uberhardt coming through those bright colours. On a very, very low gear, front suspension bouncing over the track, getting well forward, but his back wheel spinning a little bit round. Whoa, look at that descent. No wonder the spectators there have come to see the action and Gould dropping like a stone as well. What goes up must come down. And they're going like the clappers on the way down here. This is where the two finger braking is so important. Those cantilever brakes, you just have to touch them, you lock them on, your wheels can uh, suddenly lock up and down you go. Judgment on the course, they've ridden around. Gerhard is so much in the lead now, coming on in towards the finish. They're so happy for this fellow. He's been really the crowd's darling today, the way he's ridden off the front. Now Cameron getting a lovely close-up shot of the GT triangle there at the back of this bicycle. But uh, the problem's at the back now because uh, Tim Gould is in all sorts of trouble right now. And Dernis is coming through. Well, there's been quite a change overall. Oberhardt's coming through now as well. Peter Herrick running up the slope. Well, bad luck then for Tim Gould because, in fact, he's broken his chain and he's having difficulty now. He's in all sorts of trouble then, snapped it, and everyone else is going thundering by him, but I'm presuming on the downhill bit, at least he can fly down without worrying about a chain. Henk Jernis now has, be, has moved himself into second spot then. And the crowd moving out towards the finish, waiting for Zadribliak to come into sight then. In 1989, winner of the San Sebastian Classic. He's ridden in the Tour of Spain, ridden in the Tour of Switzerland, ridden in the Tour of France when he finished 63rd, ridden in the great Paris Bay in 88 when he finished 48th, and in 87 he won the Giro del Veneto, so he's won the good bike rider who's very good also on mountain biking, and he's got that one. So the pack has been shuffled behind since Gould broke his chain. Bad luck then for him. Coming in though, the second place is Henrik Dennis. Well, further bad luck, uh, Tim Davis, way back, was looking for a top placing, is now dropping back only just, I think, to come in the top ten because he's actually punctured a mile from the finish. And so that will be a disappointment for the British riders who came here full of hope and uh, had really been going extremely well as Uberhardt finishes in uh, third place. And this is the winner, Gerhard Zadrilek, saying, I've just been looking for a victory like this for a long time. I've been third and fourth. I'm very happy about the success, especially due to the fact that first rider to be able to win a World Cup in road racing and also in mountain biking. So uh, it's not going to happen again. So that's what he thinks. We'll have to wait and find out how many move across the fat wheel. But there is the result. And quite a, a shopping of the pack from what we're used to seeing with the Americans. But when we move on to the World Championship, uh, we might see some different names up there. But that just shows you the current position. Chris Neck, the Swiss rider, despite uh, having that puncture and crashing, still...